Hello guys and welcome to another episode of She TV. Today we will be talking about interview do's and don'ts. And when I say interview do's and don'ts, I specifically mean me because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I haven't been in an interview in almost 16 years and I have a ton of experience doing a billion things, but interviewing is not one of them. So today I'll be telling you about the newest interview I went on and how quickly it ended within 30 minutes. And just the rocky experience I had and I'm wondering, what could I have done better and how could I improve so I'm basically calling out to you guys and seeing how you could help me so here we go I get an email and the lady's like hey I'd like your resume I'm interested in hiring you I said great send her my resume I tell her the days and times that I'm available I hear back from her she tells me you know let's talk on the phone we talk on the phone the interview is like the phone interview is like 10 minutes. She tells me about the, uh, their negative experience with the previous person that they hired that came as a recommendation and how that person just did not have the knowledge and skill an executive assistant should have, like writing a basic like professional letter, you know, like to name, date, the address, you know, all that stuff. And like, anyway, the right format. And so I'm like, wow, I feel your pain. That is pretty frustrating. And so I'm like, I definitely can write a letter. Like that's like, I don't know, elementary school 101. So I'm like, okay, I can go on this interview. I get the interview. Every time I go on an interview, I research the entire company. So I researched, I went through every page, I read everything, I researched the COO, the CEO, I researched the executive assistant, I look at photos, I Google everything I could possibly see, I go to Glassdoor, all of these things before I walk out of my home and get myself dressed and take my time and gas and all this effort parking to go on these interviews. So I know every little detail, every little morsel I could possibly know about the people that I'm about to meet. Like it seems a little bit like stalker status, but I wanna know that I'm walking into a legitimate company before I waste my time. So I know like daughters, wives, hobbies, all these things before I walk in. And so I walk in and you know, I also come in with recommendations in mind. So, you know, I look up the, I look at the website, I see like how things could be improved, SEO perspectives, I look at Google reviews, see like why they're getting negative or positive feedback, just so that I am like a seasoned non-employee when I walk into these interviews. So now let's go to the day of the interview. Mind you, this is a like E-list celebrity in New York City who has so much prestige, but he has like a double life. He is like an ex something I'm not gonna say and a movie star. I don't want you to figure out who he is. And I go to this interview and the minute I walk into the door, the first person I'm greeted by downstairs is a security guard. And he says, who are you here to meet with? I say, blah, 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 blah. And he goes, oh, okay, great. Take the elevator to the blah, blah, blah floor. I'm like, thank you. And he goes, as I walk by, and I'm like halfway to the elevator, he says, good luck. And I'm like, okay. Anyway, I get in the elevator, I go upstairs. Now I always come very, very professionally dressed and I come with like six or seven resumes inside of like cardstock, like I make it look beautiful, okay? I get to this interview and the COO is busy. I could see that he's busy, but the lady who interviewed me over the phone, cause I know what she looks like. I've seen her in pictures. I looked at all her profiles and I go in and I'm like, oh, hi, blah, blah, blah. And she takes me directly to the CEO. And I walk in, his office is a mess. So I'm like, okay, it's probably gonna be one of my projects. And I sit down and I start interviewing. And the guy like takes a peek at my resume and he starts to look at his laptop while he's like looking at my resume. And then he's like, tell me about yourself. So I begin to tell him, you know, about my previous skills and my previous employment and what I'm good at and how I've helped blah, blah, blah and my previous low, you know, positions and all this stuff. And he already seems bored by the conversation. Like I totally lost him before I even opened, him, opened my mouth. So then he says to me, um, Adelise, you know, I, I, with all that said, he's like, I need to know that my uh, executive assistant is gonna gonna know what to do because I've had a lot of clowns walk in here. You know, a lot of people that they think they know how to do the job, but they just don't. And I'm like, okay. He goes, um, so when did you graduate from school? So I tell him the year, and I'm, I know that he's probing to figure out how old I am, which I don't always look my age to some people. Maybe to you guys I look my age, but to a lot of people I don't look my age. So I just flat out tell him my age because I've gone through so much ageism that I want to just 
put the nail in the coffin, like, let's move on. I'm old enough to do this job. And he goes, oh, I don't need to know your age. And I'm like, okay, whatever, it's fine. So then we continue the interview and all of a sudden he says to me, you know what, I don't really, you know, I'm looking at your experience here and your previous, one of your previous employers, you know, working for a clown company. I don't think that really suits me because I don't think I'm looking for Bubbles the Clown. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking, parties are a billion dollar industry. Companies, small, medium or large, feed droves of people with salaries that they distribute to them because they are, it's a huge market. It's, it's a huge, especially in New York City. People don't want to party in their homes. They want to rent halls. They want to rent entertainment. They can afford it. And I'm like, why is he demeaning one of my previous jobs as if all I did was hand out balloons? But I'm like, okay, I'm gonna ignore that. So I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take it personal. So I just keep on with the interview, and he asked me another question, and he's like, you know, I don't really know if you're able to do this job. He goes to me, do you even know where like Sardinia and Croatia are? And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, um, I said no at first, and then I was like, well, actually, no, I, I know that one of them is in Italy, and the other one, I, I might have to look it up because I think I know where it is, but I would look it up on a map, which I think anybody could look it up on a map. And he goes, see, that's the problem. If you've ever been a true executive existent to a CEO like myself, you would know an answer to that. And I'm like, okay, well, what if the previous CEO I worked for was from like Arabia or was from like, um, was from China and maybe they have some kind of luxurious town they like to go to in China. Um, it's not fair for you to say that I can't do the job because I don't know where a specific place is that you're interested in. But anyway, again, I didn't say any of that. I was like, sir, I'm, I'm, I, I can see that that would make you feel uncomfortable, but I'm pretty sure that I can look up on a map and I can use technology to find out the time zone and I can make sure that your plane arrives in time and that your car is available when you need to be there. I'm very resourceful and I'm I'm, I truly try to figure out what my executive needs. Um, and if that is your interest, I would find out about it and I would make sure that I would do it accurately and make you happy. And then he was like, yeah, I know, but I'm already thinking that you just don't know how to do this job. I'm like, okay. Now the CEO walks in because he has time and he starts to ask me questions too. And in the midst of asking me questions, the CEO cuts him off and says, you know, him with his MBA and all that, you know, all that stuff that I just, I'm not interested in. Um, it's really not going to help me figure out if you're going to be the right executive assistant for me, because although he's going to need your help too, I need to know you can handle my half of this. And then all of a sudden he cuts off the COO again and tells the CEO that he's been feeling really, really sick and that he needs to call it in to go get a table so he can go back to the hospital that he was at on Friday. This asshole doesn't realize that I've read everything about his hobbies and I know that he has a gambling habit and what he's basically trying to say is that he'd rather go back to the casino or wherever he goes and does his gambling. And I'm like, <laughs> This is insulting. And at this point, I want to get up and leave the interview. But I put myself through 10 more minutes of torture. Mind you, it was a 30-minute interview. And he goes off to ask me some more wild questions that um, basically aren't questions. They're more like statements to prove that I wouldn't be able to do this job. Like, you know, he asked me about social media. And I had 10,000 things to say about his social media because he has an identity crisis. He's mixing up his fame with his profession. And it's very unclear. And he actually looks like a jack of all trades. And I mean, obviously, I wouldn't have said it that way. But I would have liked to have helped him with that. But he apparently felt like I had no experience with that either. So at one point he got up, shook my hand and said, thank you for coming, but I don't think you're the right person for the job. And I left. How could I have handled that better? And when should I know to just get up and walk out of an interview so that I can save some little shred of dignity? Help me out here and have a lovely day. Ciao, bacalao.